Folks, damning documents have been, well, have actually revealed from the Department of Work and Pensions that seven out of ten of disabled pensioners may well lose their winter fuel payments this year. That report admitted that roughly 1.6 million could actually miss out on the payment this winter. And to top it all off, Downing Street has confirmed that it carried out no impact assessment before making the decision, with medical experts warning people could well die this winter as a result of the cold. <clears throat> Well, joining me now is the writer for Conservative Home, Charles Amos. Charles, thank you very much for your company. Now, Charles, you are, my friend, a hardliner on this issue, and you think, well, you know, no out for the pensioners, essentially. Absolutely. The bottom 20% of pensioners spend about 17% of their income on recreation and culture, hotels and cigarettes, alcohol and tobacco they don't need the winter fuel allowance that 17 percent refers to 2100 pounds of expenditure all they would need to do to take account of the reduction in the winter fuel allowance or the elimination of it for them rather is to reduce their leisure expenditure by 10 percent that is not much to ask 10% is quite a lot, is it not? I mean, if you're a pensioner that's worked all of your life, they're putting... Uh, Charles, as you well know, I, I think you would agree with this argument that through the government's pursuit of net zero, for example, energy is getting more expensive. And that means that pensioners who may well have gotten used to the fact that they receive this winter fuel payment can't actually afford the energy bills that are going up, what, 10% this winter? I don't think that's the case at all. If you look at the state pension, that is due to go up £690 this year. That more than makes up for the reduction. It's still of one of the lowest in the OECD. We don't, in the, but certainly in Europe, we don't have good, highly paid pensioners. You know, you're making out that this is the land of milk and honey. The fact that we have a lower state pension means that taxes are lower and that allows people to pay into a oh, private tax, pension. Oh, you know taxes that's aren't cool. lower. Stop trying to sell that. That's a dead all horse you're trying to flog. All else equal, if you have a higher state pension, you've got to have higher taxes, meaning given Britain has a lower state pension, it's got to have lower taxes relative to those other countries that you speak about, which allows people to make their own decisions to pay into a private pension if they so please, which will, in most cases, offer a better return than the state pension. But, well, come on, what have you got against pensioners? Why not look for cuts elsewhere, right? There are a myriad of things you could do. What about not sending 12 billion quid abroad in so-called climate aid for a start? Yeah, I would eliminate that 12 billion pounds all together, I would eliminate a vast majority of the welfare budget. I would cut defence. I would cut a great number of things. You would cut defence? I would cut the fence. But given that the government is not going to do that, Darren, it's very important well, thank that we God. support them making this £1.5 billion cut. Because it's essential that this government closes the deficit of £122 billion to help us get down the national debt, which is at the moment £2.5 trillion. They're doing the right thing, the Labour Party, and they ought to be supported by classical liberals such as yourself. Well, Charles, what about this then? 600 million quid to Ukraine on a war that some are starting to argue they ain't going to win. Yeah, I wouldn't spend that money either, but that doesn't detract from the fact that the what would you spend money on? fuel allowance should be eliminated. You're starting to sound very tight, Charles. Oh, I am a very tight individual, both personally and in my politics. It's very important that the state reduces its spending and it starts to reduce down the national debt. This government is taking the prudent course of action and it ought to be supported by everybody who is prudent. Well, you're saying it's, it's got a prudent uh, action toward the economy. I mean, I don't think that 12 billion commitment, the 600 million just announced for Ukraine, uh, they say they've got a 22 billion black hole, yet they can find all of these ways of spending the cash, uh, wasting it on other the, these pet projects of theirs. I don't think this is a prudent government. In fact, I'd argue that it looks quite reckless and it just wants to start intergenerational warfare. Well, I would take the point that it's not as prudent as it could be, but I think when it comes to making the hard choices of cutting winter fuel allowance, it's certainly making a good start. I would dispute that it's launching intergenerational oil warfare. In fact, it's just trying to stop boomers essentially ripping off young people. If you look at those born between 1945 and 1961, you'll find that they have taken, or will take, 
one pound twenty out of the welfare state for every one pound they have paid in. Pensioners under this government are starting to get what they deserve, which is less. That's appalling. That is an appalling thing to say, what they right. deserve. Well, it makes it sound like, they, have they not worked all of their lives? Have they not contributed to building this country into what it is today? Have they Absolutely. not? They but had interest rates difficult. far higher than what we have today. During And they, they went through the winter of discontent. They went through a whole host of things in which the economy was far worse than the, the, yes. what we enjoy right now. I and actually, I would agree with that. giving a bung to train drivers, for example, over pensioners, I think is absolutely appalling. I would agree with that. But I would make the point again that for every one pound they have paid into the welfare state, they have thus far taken one pound 20 out. If pensioners should oh, get in well, I'll give them the 20 what they've Come paid on. out, or rather get out what they've paid in, then they should see expenditure on themselves reduced by about 20p. That way, people would be getting exactly what they've paid in, which is what many pensioners insist they should get. All right, Charles, we welcome all views on this channel, and I think it's safe to say after that view, it, that very much rings true. Charles Amos, of writer for Conservative Home, thank you very much for your time. I'm going to see what my panel make of this. Stephen Pound is forming. He has said Pound the Alarm. La former Labour MP, of course, and the former Special Advisor, Charlie Rowley, who was doing rolls across the floor with rage there. <laughs> Stephen Pound, I think you're both in agreement I, on I, that. I'm, go I'm gobsmacked. Up to, in, in all honesty, that was a Conservative? Mm. Okay, yeah. Classical I, mean, liberal, I, I appreciate classical that Kemi liberal. Badenoch has come out and said she's in favour of means testing the, the winter fuel allowance, and, you know, fair play to Kemi, but that's extraordinary. Look, there's a couple of things I felt which, which actually do need to be sorted out about this. Firstly, this business about people with disabilities. If you're a person with a disability, you're going to be on disability benefits. If you're on disability benefits, you're still going to get the winter fuel allowance. So what that figure that they're quoting there, which is, it has, is actually nuanced with roughly an about, and it, it's not a precise figure, yeah. it's the number of people who are not claimed. That's still a lot. Yeah. Mm. Well, no, th let's get them to claim. But the thing is, look, there were, there were three benefits that went out to everybody. There was Ted Heath's tenner. Do you remember, at Christmas, you, you're, you're too young to know about this, but <laughs> uh, at, at Christmas you get a tenner just before Christmas, courtesy of Ted Heath in, back in 1974. Right. Yeah, that goes to everybody. It should be worth about 260 quid now, but you still get a tenner. The second one was the free TV licence. Now, the idea, we can argue about whether the BBC <laughs> should be subsidised by the state. That's another argument. I think it's probably been lost. But when the government, a couple of years ago, decided to end the universal free TV licence, they said, we're going to target it. We're going to means test it because there's no reason at all why wealthier pensioners should actually get this benefit. Then when we had the debate on the, the winter fuel allowance, the killer line for me always was, look, why should King Charles get this benefit? Now, when you say we could spend it on something else, it's not a zero-sum game. I'm a pensioner and I care about many, many things. Personally, when I got the winter fuel allowance, I tried to send it back. They said, you can't do that. So I give it to the Salvation Army, you know, suitably topped up, obviously. But the reality is I care about the NHS. I care about security. I care about the policing. I care about the prisons. I care about the armed forces. And if the money from that 200 quid can go towards those things that matter to me and to other pensioners, then fair play. I'm proud to do my bit and say farewell to 200 quid. Let the people most in need have it. Let people like me who are not in need, let's see that money diverted to all those other good causes. So, uh, Charlie, the, the argument here would be that, one, <coughs> there isn't a way of clearly judging by those figures from the DWP, there isn't enough of an uh, awareness campaign to get people to sign up if they are indeed eligible for pension credit. Mm. And also, at a time when energy bills are going up 10%, people are going to feel that in their pockets. Uh, totally. And yeah, yeah, the dividing line is sort of encouraging people to sign up, which I, I think is the right thing, um, versus what you heard earlier on uh, through Charles Nuttier Amos. than a fruitcake. Not, not wanting anybody to sign up at all because that'll cost us even more. Yeah. So, you know, what do you want? And I do think you want people to sign up. But let's, let's just bring this back to reality. We're not talking about, you know, the most uh, well-off pensioners. Of course there's a way, if you want to really make things uh, uh, are fair, if you've got to make those savings, if you've got to make those tough decisions, there will be some wealthy pensioners out there, very, very wealthy pensioners that might not need the winter fuel allowance. That's just a fact. They, you know, they will openly, like Stephen has just said on this show, that you'd happily give it back or pass it on to another cause. A, a cause. We're talking about 10 million people. Mm. 10 million pensioners in our country are not well off. Yeah. They are not in the higher bracket of income or pensions. These are people that, yes, they will get an increase in their pensioners. Charles, actually, to his credit, did say that is coming in, 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 in train. But 
winter bills, fuel, bill, fuel bills, as yeah. you said, Darren, are going up. Mm -hmm. There will be 10 million pensioners who won't have that allowance this year, that will face a choice between heating and eating, that will find themselves, I'm afraid, going to see a GP or having to see uh, a specialist or go to A&E because they are uh, cold or they're getting ill uh, or, they're, or they're getting sick. And the very idea um, that, you know, I don't know... Um, uh, much about uh, much Charles, um, Mr. Not, Amos. Not, yeah. sure, not, not sure I'll read much more <laughs> about yeah. it either. Yeah. But you know, if, when you're in government, yeah. you've got to make difficult decisions. But you can also learn yeah. from the past. Now we can have a conversation again another time about this trust's budget and all the rest of it there. But one of the criticisms there that there was no impact assessment, economic impact assessment during that mini budget. The very idea that this new government has come in and the DWP themselves has said, and the government has had to admit that they have not carried out yeah. an economic impact assessment on taking away that winter fuel allowance shows that it's pure politics. It is a choice. They're making the wrong one. No wonder those 50 MPs, uh, Labour MPs were up in arms about it, it should be reversed because you're going to see yeah. many, many innocent pensioners on top of what DWP is saying today, disabled people, some of the most vulnerable people mm. in our society, along with pensioners, losing out. No, that no, is no, a yeah. political yeah. choice. No. It is the wrong one and this government yeah. uh, should hang its head in yeah. shame. So, yeah. Stephen, uh, uh, the point that some of our viewers are making is that actually the, it's a red herring to say, oh, well, there are some rich pensioners because these rich pensioners will be paying income tax. They will yeah. be paying tax. This isn't taxable. The winter fuel allowance is no, it Indeed. should be. But, but... Yeah, yeah no, that would be, you, you talked about German levels of benefits and you talked about some of the other European benefits. Yeah. One of the things that is that they are taxable. It would make, in my opinion, it would make more sense to actually put, that, put all that into one basket and have it taxed. That would solve the problem immediately. But on the question of the rebellion, 12 Labour MPs abstained. 12. The other people would be people like David Lammy, who was in the Ukraine, Hilary Benn, who was in Northern Ireland. There were people... Oh, who had, no, someone said she was having... Uh, the MP for yeah, Liverpool... Yeah, the, the dentist. The yeah. dental yeah. appointment. Yeah. Oh, come I, on. I, 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 I've, I've counted her in the people who... Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, but look, the, 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 the reality... Private here, appointment, I should imagine, as well, yeah, well to get it that quick. Yeah, look, can I just say, I mean, I have to say, I'm, I'm you know, like, like a lot of people of my generation, I read the Bible, and I think the prophet Amos was a particularly gloomy prophet. It wasn't quite as gloomy as Job. No, but I have to say, Charles Amos came out with most extraordinary statements. <laughs> I, I think the one thing oh, he didn't right. pick up on is, in all honesty, there are a lot of pensioners and... Yep. who are proud, too proud to take the benefits. Yeah, well, that's I, it. I think that's a, an issue. Exactly. Stop slamming the baby boomers. Yep. A lot of them are actually quite too, too, too proud. No, I agree, I agree. Right, thank you very much.